your thing. But we drain them. One down. Two down. Three down. Four down. Nice. Oh, already? Yep. Got them all. <laughs> Uh, that's embarrassing. Welcome to Gambit. Given that this is Gambit, I assume you're here to make the grind slightly more bearable so you can do other things. But if you're here to slay out and get some nice wins, this guide is also for you. This video will go over the nuances of Gambit, and how to deal with the different aspects of the game mode in a way that won't have you pulling out your hair. Maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Loadouts are the best place to start. This is the most important aspect of any Gambit match, as it dictates what role you're going to try to fulfill. Snipers, machine guns, and scouts are good for invaders and invading, while anything else is good for ad clear. Exotics also make this a bit more nuanced, as it can drastically change how you approach a situation. But for the most part, the effective range of a weapon, as well as how good it is at ad clear, will tell you what role you will attempt to fulfill. So choose a weapon according to what you deem is good for what you're trying to do. An example of an invader loadout looks something like this. While an example of a collector role would be something like this. While a mixture of both would look something like this. So Gambit games have a beginning, middle, and end. Each phase is dictated by the sum of motes each team has in their banks. The start of a match is when each team has zero motes deposited. In this phase, no matter what your normal role is, you're fragging out. Kill as many enemies as possible and collect their motes quickly, while also collecting special and heavy ammo for later. The only thing afterward is to decide when to deposit, first or second. Now, depositing first gives you the advantage of intel, as you can see as the enemy team destroys your blockers, indicated by the symbols below their bank account. However, if you deposited second, your advantage is that you can possibly siphon funds from the enemy team by placing two or more blockers. This is balanced out by the potential of the enemy team dropping several blockers at once and killing your team off with an invade, so deciding when it's best to drop your initial blockers is very important. Also, dying in this phase puts your team behind by a large margin, as the first invade is the most important, given that snowballing can easily start in this phase. Because of this, the most important part in this phase is to get the first invade. I cannot stress this enough. The reason for this is that you can chain invades over and over before the enemy team can collect enough motes to get a single invade. It doesn't matter if you have 14 motes and need one more to get a large blocker. It doesn't matter. If you're passing through mid and can activate your team's invade portal, do it. I cannot stress this enough. That is how powerful getting the first invade is. Next up is the mid game, and depending on how the early game went, this can go so many different ways. Your objective during this phase is to invade as early and often as possible, drop multiple blockers on the enemy at the same time to siphon motes, and collect as many motes as possible. Getting a leg up in this phase is very important as you can constantly invade the enemy team and keep them from depositing motes. If you can keep up the pressure, you can get ahead. This is a very important tip. When collecting motes and you have a number close to a large blocker, let's say 13, and they're passing through mid, deposit your motes anyway. A large blocker matters little in comparison to grabbing more motes to deposit. If you need two motes for 15, you spend more time running back and forth to only grab two motes when you could be spending that time collecting even more. It's a race. Seconds matter and large blockers aren't worth much unless you have an invade currently in progress. So when invading, you're trying to delay and keep your opponents away from their bank so your team can get enough motes for you to invade again. Kills are nice, but they aren't everything. An invader that dies in 5 seconds and gets 1 kill doesn't do much in comparison to an invader that stays for the full 30 seconds, but ensures that their enemies cannot move. Also, when you're not invading, ensure you're also contributing to collecting and depositing motes. The reason for this is that it puts your team even further ahead and grants you super energy and ammo for the next invade. Camping an invade portal is a good way to get caught out without ammo. For the most part, how you should play as the invader is hyper-aggressive, but only if the enemy team doesn't know where you are. You only get 30 seconds to deal as much damage as possible. If they find out where you are, most of the time they will be watching your spot, meaning they aren't doing anything else. You only have 30 seconds and making the most of it to delay the enemy team is very important to a good invader. When you're not the invader, collect and deposit as many motes as possible to ensure that the enemy team cannot deposit while the invader is on the other side, while siphoning motes by dropping blockers. 
You may be tempted to get an additional one moat to get to 15, but if somebody drops a blocker on the other side during an invade, you can start siphoning moats from your enemies, meaning you get a net gain while also putting pressure on the enemy team, so there's force to split their attention between the blocker and the invader. Also, if you have enough to pull the primeval, stop collecting moats and deposit. This cannot be stressed enough. The longer the primeval is out, the more damage buffs you can stack for maximum damage. So the sooner your primeval is out, the better. Doesn't matter if you drop a blocker on the other side during this time. If you're collecting moats to send blockers, then it only gives the enemy team more time to recover. The game's a race, after all, so treat it as such. Alrighty, on to the final phase. Your objective during this phase is to watch out for invaders and stack primeval slayer buffs as much as possible while also dealing damage between that. These primeval slayer buffs are granted to your entire team permanently upon killing an envoy. The more of these buffs you have, the easier the boss is to kill. Meanwhile, the enemy invade portal will be active all the time, and if you die to the invader, it heals the boss. Keep this from happening, but if you can kill the invader at the cost of your own life, do so, as it allows your team to focus on the objective rather than the invader. If you're on the losing side of the conflict and your enemies got the primeval out first, be as fast as possible with moat collection. There's no pressure from invasions going on, so make sure that you grab it as early and fast as possible while invading as much as possible. The rule of playing your life as an invader also applies here, as a team which is pressured by an invader is not likely to damage the primeval. So play your life and work with the primeval to kill enemy players. Finally is a really, really important tip, which is countering invaders. Consider the following. The invader can only spawn in one of three spots, which are represented by the spawn points of enemies. If your team is in one spot, the invader cannot spawn there. So by process of elimination, you can safely say the invader is in one of two spots. If your teammates are in two spots, then it's almost guaranteed that the invader is in the third one. There are also favorite spawns the game likes to put invaders in. If your team is in one spot, most of the time the invader spawns in another spot. For example, on this map, invaders tend to spawn on the beach and thus should be checked first. Now once you find the invader, how do you deal with them? Machine guns and sniper rifles are the best, but remember that the invader has wall hacks, so if you cannot contest them one-on-one, -on -one, make sure to push as a team. If you cannot go out as a team, pressure the invader so they cannot move while you heal up. Going at the invader one at a time is a good way to get picked off and not paying attention will get you shot in the back with a sniper. If you don't have a lot of moats, play aggressive or try to deposit your moats in a safe way. Distracting the invader can allow your team to take them down or deposit their moats before the invader realizes what they're doing. If you have a lot of moats, try your best not to contest the invader to ensure that you get your moats to the bank. Otherwise, contest the invader as a last resort. Not like this guy in this clip. This guy was an idiot. It's a 1v4. Leverage that fact. Alrighty, last thing I'll do is play some clips to show off my thought process. Given that I'm an invader main, I'm so sorry, most of them are invasion clips. So buckle up to watch some disrespect. In this clip, the invader spawns in, and normally they spawn in the left or the middle. So, as the invader spawns in, I'd first check mid. Normally they peek mid immediately afterwards, however I notice a radar ping on my left. That dictates where the invader is, and so because they got the initial shot off on me, I'm now delaying for time while my team hopefully figures out where they are. As I play Ring Around the Rosie with the invader, I end up getting caught out in the open, the invader is about to kill me, however my teammate ends up taking a sniper shot saving my life and killing the invader off. In this clip, we end up depositing second, which allows us to start siphoning moats from the enemy bank. During this time, I attempt to put the fear of whatever deity the enemy team believes in into them, so they won't contest the middle, allowing us to drain more moats. I do this by sniping one of their teammates. I don't necessarily have to get all of them. I just need to protect the blockers. So now that they realize that I'm a threat, they stopped attacking the blockers and started going after me. So while I'm here, I attempt to get a pick on the person still collecting, however I don't have the angle, so I could resume protecting the blockers again. And after that, we're able to completely take all of their moats. In this clip, we end up dropping several blockers on the enemy side during an invade. This allows me to get in, however the enemy team is able to clear out most of the blockers with relative ease. However, in the middle of this, a teammate drops a small blocker on the other side, which prevents them from depositing. This allows me to deny a huge amount of moats at the same time. 
This person has a machine gun and is watching my angle. However, I have more burst damage, so I use the angle to my advantage and burst them down with two shots. The final person ends up coming from spawn, and I shoot them twice with a sniper rifle. For whatever reason, I denied 15 motes in that moment, even though they just died, so I don't know. <laughs> In this final clip, the invader comes while I'm clearing out blockers. I get immediately off of the main area because I'm low on HP, and check beach because it's always beach. The invader ends up being there and I end up hitting them twice, which gives me the advantage so I push it. Finish them off with a throwing knife, and my teammates are able to clear off the blocker. A hasty invade removal means we can resume collecting motes with no delay. And that's about it. There's a bit of extra nuance to the mode which you can discover, but knowing these tips is very important for medium and high skilled players to know how to push and get advantages. So hopefully Gambit becomes slightly less bothersome for y'all, and have a good day. Cheers!